Welcome to my latest quick tip. This is in celebration of Black Friday 2023 and the fact we've just released an FX PhD Resolve 86 update lesson. I thought I'd just give you a little tip because I'm getting asked more and more, can I do green screen comping? Can you do the green screens? Now, traditionally I would have said, no, I don't do that. It's a VFX job, but more and more I've been doing them. There's different ways and this is a technique I've been using uh, and it's working well for me, it's quite good. I want to thank Blackmagic for letting me use this clip. I've used it for training. We used it in demos a number of years ago at the shows. I use it in my air colorist classes and it, it shows it quite well. It's pretty simple. It's not too complex, but it's a level that you can achieve. Got two layers. I've got a vision layer two here. So my green shot is sitting above my plate shot here. So V2, V1. If you want to click between them, you cannot because obviously two lays over the top of V1. Just use this little guy here. If you ever wondered what that is, that will unmix the layers so you can see V1 and you can see V2. I put a basic grade, that's all, just to save a bit of time. I'm gonna to go to number two, add a new serial node in here, and I'm gonna to attempt to key this green screen. And I'm gonna use the 3D key here. That's a key here, it's the cube looking, looking one here. So with the 3D keyer, what I like to do is to just turn on the eyedropper plus. That way I can draw more than one stroke and I'm looking for different areas of luminance there on this green screen. So I might do one more, come down there like that to there, like that, I've got that covered. It would automatically highlight because I've got this highlight turned on. If you don't like that, you can turn that off. But your plus here, that will enable you me to draw three and it's used these three lines to make my 3D key. I'm gonna turn off that, like this there will turn off those lines. So I've got it to there, but you can see I've got the top of the set. Anyone who's taken any of my workshops uh, previously will know, you know, I'm not the best at animating and drawing, drawing shapes, but you know, there's always room for improvement, as I say. Now, if I track that forward, now it's gonna track the guys in the boat. The track's gonna be hopeless, it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna send that back to the beginning. I'm gonna set my point tracker here. Send this guy up a little bit. I'm gonna just use this add point there and put some points on this shape. I'll put one up the top there on the edge of the green screen. Put another one just there like that. And then put a couple down the bottom which will enable that to just lock on to there. Point track is really cool for just this very, that's uh, Steven Spielberg with my next coloring job. Yeah, he can wait. Let's go forward on those two points. Now that's done a really good job. Probably just got to extend my shape a little bit, that's all. We're in global, so it doesn't matter. I can just extend that off the end here, like that, like that. So just to go over that with the highlight there, I've got that in my key. I'm gonna invert that, 3D key. Invert is this guy here. Pretty good, so that's masking that out, that's tracked. Got them in a key like that. Highlight off. Here's the magic, right click, add alpha output. So you right click on the gray background and not the node. Add an alpha output, gives you another little output box here with a blue dot. You take your key output out of the 3D key node and drag into there, and that will overlay over the top there of these guys. Let's just remove that shape off the top, shift tilde, get rid of all those shapes, and then I'll jump into my key and my finette, matte finesse tool. I'm going to use the D spill. I'm going to wind that all the way into there to despill some of that green. I'm gonna play that a little bit and we got a slight little edge, but I try and use least amount of any of this as possible because anything you do here is normally gonna just soft, soften an edge and maybe too much, you're gonna get a slight halo. So if I'm using anything, I'm using very small amounts. I might use just a little bit of the pre-filter on it, not much. And then I'm going to go to shrink it very slightly and just shrink the radius in. Got a very small edge there. I'm going to shrink this guy just a little bit more. 
just about there yeah just take the edge off that there like that now if I zoom in there we can see that's a little bit better uh, now I could start coloring here obviously but I have to color two layers and I have to go from one to the other I mean I could unmix them and grade them reasonably easy but when I'm looking for a look really I just now want to grade this as one comp and not really think about it as being two so uh, once I've selected both there, I'll right click and at the top of that option, new compound clip and call this uh, boat comp. Uh, really creative naming, don't you think? Boat comp, like that. Now that flattens that down into one, uh, one piece of media. I could then grade that as one. So I could just drop my gamma down there. I might decide that I'd want to make this a little bit of a nighttime shot desaturate it whatever you want to do here you're grading shapes I'm really grading this now as if it was a hundred percent shot now if I wanted to go warmer like that and I'm thinking oh you know I've done for this old antique feel but I feel I just want to adjust the comp and maybe I want to take the boys down and make them just a little bit darker because the background's a bit darker to them what I can do which is pretty cool and that's a comp I can choose to right click on there and then I can open in timeline opens it back out got the two timelines here displayed go back into here then got my node structure because I'm back in two layers I could go in there change it I could color them a bit more let's add a second serial node bring the grade down on the guys in the boat just like that just darken them off just a little bit more Maybe desaturate them. Maybe I need to adjust my key. Maybe I want to retract that mask. Could be a number of things that I want to do. Let's do something really obvious. I'm going to go in there where I did make that key. And what I'm going to do is to go in there and I'm going to adjust that shape of that key, that, that line that I made. So if I was to bring that down here and I was to stick that right through that guy like that, then what I'm going to do is go back to my edit and I'm going to go back to the to the boat comp one like that flattened down there now we've got boat comp and we can see my grade is still sitting there I can turn my grade off but I fixed up my key I've darkened the boys down and you see that nasty little shape I drew there has now masked out that guy in the back of the boat but it sort of shows the example of how that can work so you've got the best of both worlds you're still able to grade as one. You're still able to go in and unpick that and re-affect your green screen if you're looking at it and think, oh, I wish I'd keyed that slightly better or changed it. And I'll sum up by saying green screen stuff is just like experience. The more you do, the more confident you are, the more you know the problems and the headaches in green screens. But there's a lot of it about, especially in reality, talking heads, uh, corporate shows you're going to be seeing a lot of green screen so if you've got confidence as a colorist you can do it then you're really going to cash in it for more work enjoy your coloring and i will see you on the next one cheers it's tea